Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Reservation Dogs, season two. I don't know why I said it like that, but I did, and it's a show that I absolutely love. I've been waiting for season two to finish, for all of the episodes to be released before I can binge them. I prefer to watch TV shows in the binge style. Uh, having to wait week, week after week is, uh, I just, I watch too much stuff. I'm reviewing too many movies and TV shows to have to try and remember what happened every single week. So I waited for season two of Reservation Dogs, the FX show, which I watched on Hulu. I waited for season two to wrap up, which it did, uh, I think, last month. So I'm a little late on it, and uh, but that's okay. Everything's going to be okay, everybody. Uh, my thoughts on things can wait. They, they don't need to be consumed the very moment uh, it is available. But I absolutely loved season one of this show, and season two is no different. If, if at all season two made me love this show even more, uh, as if you're not familiar, Reservation Dogs follows a group of kids who live on an Indian reservation, a Native American reservation in Oklahoma, uh, and it follows them in their life and dealing with the tragedies of life, uh, exposing the humor of life, as it were. The show is very heavy. There is a lot of drama in this show, but it's dealt with in such a way that it's just so heartwarming. Like, I love all of these kids, and it does, like, give give space for the comedy of life, uh, which there is plenty of life. And, you know, comedy is such a welcomed change in energy when so many horrible things are constantly around you, when you exist in uh, a state of trauma, which the first season was this group of kids, the reservation dogs, the res dogs, the gang of kids. It's not really gang, but uh, they're dealing with the passing of one of their friends, Daniel, who... Uh, killed himself, committed suicide, which is a brutal episode from the first season where we finally, I don't think we actually knew what happened to Daniel until the episode where I think it was Elora taking her driver's test with Bill Burr, and we see that she actually is the one that discovered Daniel uh, who had hung himself in this like abandoned building that is their hangout spot. And uh, just like a brutal, heartbreaking uh, so the end of last season, the events were their plan was to save money and move to Cal California, which was Daniel's goal. Uh, he wanted to go to California. So they're all saving money. Alora, a little bit more passionate about leaving than everybody else. Uh, you know, we have Bear kind of spending their money. Um, Willie Jack not really wanting to leave, like wanting to support her friends, but not really wa wanting to leave, along with Cheese, you know, both of which kind of just want to support their friends and be there to encourage their friends in whatever they want to do. Uh, but the events of last season, Elora left, basically ditched Bear. Cheese and Willie Jack didn't want to go. They pulled out last minute, don't want to go to Cali. Elora ends up teaming up with Jackie, who was from the rival gang, uh, to go to California. She wanted to get out of the reservation just like Laura did. Uh, so the end of last season was them leaving, Bear just waiting for them to pick him up on the sidewalk, getting ghosted. Uh, there was just a tornado uh, that the their uncle, or one of their uncles, was able to change to divert its its uh, direction so the town was spared everything surrounding the reservation was destroyed but their their spot was good so effective in doing so uh and a curse willie jack uh, had collected some of jackie's hair and had uh, a white guy from the bar put a curse on her um 
so as this season opens, it opens with Willie Jack talking to the camera saying, sup, sup, shit ass. Shit ass is like the best like kind of term of endearment <laughs> in a lot of ways. Uh, shit, shit ass is like the colloquialism for, for that area. I, I, I love everything about this show. Uh, so anyway, so it's her kind of recapping what happened, talking to the picture of Daniel in her kitchen, uh, in the like dining room area of like the, the, the kitchen area telling Daniel what happened, that her curse backfired, that Alora split with this this her, this person jackie that's their mortal enemy um that their uncle was able to stop the tornado and now he thinks he's like a, a you know a, a healer or whatever uh her dad's ocd is on high alert like she, he's going crazy bear still talking to the hard-nipped spirit guide of his that he met in the in the first that he was talking to a lot in the first uh, season. Cheese living with his uncle, played by Dogface, the guy who went viral on TikTok. So he plays Cheese's uncle, who Cheese is living with uh, in this season, or at least at the beginning of this season. And uh, some random horse showed up at Kenny Boy's uh, at the, the salvage yard, as it were. And she's, you know, and the uh, the twins had their bikes stolen. Like, everything bad is happening. So, Willie Jack is taking that as her curse backfired, which her uncle warned her of dealing with negative medicine, negative, like, magic uh, is not good and will come back to get you. So, she's bummed out at that whole thing. Uh, we're also seeing Elora and Jackie's kind of attempt to get to California where the their car breaks down and then they end up hitching a ride with this guy who sells he's like driving around selling prints of famous art pieces who loves country music modern day country music and the episode it's so hilarious like the dude turns down some random road and the girls immediately notice and immediately are like hey you need to let us out and he's not letting them right the the whole situation you don't know what this guy is doing like it could easily be he means well but also it could easily mean that he like has done this before but immediately jackie at the front seat like gets in position to kick his face then kicks his face uh, Laura had been given this the the butterfly knife that that Jackie bought at the gas station and stabs the dude in the shoulder like things escalate so quick in that situation absolutely hilarious they get out they don't have any of their stuff they don't have any of their money stranded out in the middle of nowhere trying to get a car ends up getting chased down by these guys with guns in a pickup truck obviously they survive you know that whole situation with them then they get a car, steal a car, steal a truck, and and get back home. Basically, they go back home, and then go back to tow their car back to get the car fixed. Uh, but their attempt at the end of last season to get to California just completely went off the rails immediately. So both Jackie and Alora are back on the reservation with everybody else. But at this time, the crew is kind of split up. I mean, they were dealing with the trauma of Daniel killing himself and then to have one of their members, Laura, basically ghost them and still try to leave, team up with their rival, right? It's just fractured the group even more. Also in this season, we obviously get more characters as TV shows tend to do. They get another season. They get some more money. They bring in some more characters, which I love. They, we get to see a lot more of the adults. We also get to see how these adults had their own crew back in the day and how a death in their crew changed and fractured in very much the same way that happened with the Res Dogs. So it's you're getting to see how 
these traumatic events in a lot of ways are part of the life of living on the reservation of living in a situation where you know it's it, it it's just a shitty situation there's little infrastructure poverty drug abuse like it's just there's not a lot of future there and you know because of that there's a lot of depression a lot of suicide the show doesn't dip into the drug aspects like you don't really see anybody suffering with addiction at all alcoholism drug use so it doesn't despite the fact that there's death that makes the the dramatic aspects of the show puts a lot of weight and makes it really heavy it doesn't go as far as like you're not seeing characters struggling with drug abuse which may be season three right so it's it's elevated above it doesn't go that dark because that's definitely another layer to that kind of life on reservations is the the alcohol and and drug abuse that can happen which happens when there's no when you have like no when when there's very little future to be obtained other than this existence it's like you know what else can you do it's like the only way you can escape self-medicate and of course that that goes horribly wrong in, in reality uh so the show hasn't dipped into that but we do see these people struggling with their traumas generational traumas and whatnot but also still getting this the unique flavor you get from having a story written directed acted by native americans like clearly an authentic take on life that you don't see expressed anywhere right which makes this show like which makes me love this show so much because so many movies and tv so much media is like the same stuff all of the, it's a remake a reboot the same kind of formula the same kind of stuff over and over again just renamed rebranded regurgitated garbage so when you get something new you get something fresh like an authentic unique perspective and take on a thing i absolutely love it and this does that like a hundred percent and i like i love all these characters despite their flaws like they're so lovable all of them like the adults the kids like you just like you want all of them to succeed and it, it, it's just I, I don't know it's it's so great but so this this season opens up a lot more to the adults uh, shows more of that, shows how these adults are dealing with their friend, Cookie, who died, who was Alora's mom. And we get to find out what events happened to Cookie, specifically in my favorite episode of this season, episode eight, one of my favorite episodes, I guess, um, is specific. It's, it's Bear, the, the, the tribal cop, and uh, Kenny Boy. Bear is going to investigate the stolen catfish. Uh, is told to go check out the meth heads at the junkyard. So, of course, that's Kenny Boy. Which even, like, they're called meth heads. But they don't at all act like meth heads. You know? Like, there's, there's no real evidence of drug abuse. Aside from, like, oh, dog face grows weed, smokes weed. Which is, like, as far as the most benign kind of drug abuse you could have but it's anyway so bear goes to investigate this thing and ends up drinking a uh, soda that's dosed with dmt and trips out first time he's done drugs and throughout the episode it's cutting back to this incident that happened with cookie where cookie's out on a date with this guy dude's drunk they're on a motorcycle and bear kind of tries to stop him but not really not really asserting himself like they're able to just like brush him off like nothing and of course she dies they die i don't know if both of them die but she dies and he blames them it's like such a heartbreaking episode but we find out what that event was that split up that friend group all of these kids parents used to be friends they all grew up generations and generations growing up on this reservation 
and that was an event that split their friend group up. So you see that same kind of trauma mirrored in the adults, which is a fun episode. You get to see Bear and Kenny Boy kind of bind, bond. You get to see them uncover the uh, the cult, the, the crazy catfish head cult that they, they uncovered. And I had, to, I had to Google a few things watching this show. Just obviously I'm ignorant to so much. Uh, in many episodes, anytime an owl is depicted, whether it's a giant owl statue, whether it's an owl posted up outside of somebody's building, if it's a, like a sticker or, or like a thing on a table, uh, the eyes are pixelated out. And apparently that is because owls, the eyes, uh, are harbingers of evil. So you don't want to look into the eyes of an owl. Uh, it's bad luck. So that's why they are pixelated out. I Googled it so you don't have to. Uh, and that's why you see towards the end, uh, I think it's Willie Jack. There's like a, an owl or something on a picture of an owl on the table and she flips it over. Uh, oh, it's no, it's Alora, I think. Alora at uh, that woman's house. And she's with Jackie that's eating the biscuits and, and ranch dressing. <laughs> they, the, the woman they steal the, the truck from. Let's take a little break from the show to promote. I figured out a way on my website to offer prints for every single painting. So if you go to a painting, you can buy the original painting or you can buy a print for everything. Artwork that you don't want to spend $100 plus on 9 by 12 inch ink painting on paper. $100 for the original one of a kind piece of artwork. Paintings range in price depending on their size. The 8x10 print, $20. Available in the store at inspireddisorder.com. And now let's get back to the show! But yeah, that that cult has a giant owl and the eyes are pixelated. And I had noticed, noticed the pixelated eyes in other things, in other owls. And so I finally Googled it and found out. And it's, you know, that's one... Just like so many details that I probably don't even pick up on that add to the uniqueness of this show that I, I love so much. Um, so you find out what happens with Cookie. Bear gets a job. Alora gets a job as well. Bear gets a job uh, roofing. So he's working with Cheese's uncle, Dogface. Uh, he's working with uh, Daniel's dad, Although he kind of keeps to himself, they don't really talk much until later on. And, uh, you know, and you get to see, like, what it's like for these kids as they approach graduating from high school, transitioning into real life. How horrible it is to work a regular job. And, I mean, it's nice to finally have money. Like, there's definitely a lot of independence you get when you start working that age. It feels amazing. You know, you oh, finally got some money, but you also don't really have many bills, right? But it's still a grind. It's still like, uh, it's, it's just, it's, it sucks. Work sucks. Um, so he gets a job. Uh, there's an episode where Cheese gets arrested. You know, the, the cops arrest his uncle for growing weed. And Cheese was there, so he gets arrested, and he's put in a group home with these kids that's run by Mark Marin, which is another one of the uh, comedians to have a little cameo. I don't think – I didn't see Bill Burr come back. So it's, you know, Bobby Lee is in this in this season. has a There's an episode he's in. Not, not a big character. I always thought, like, maybe you'd be a bigger character. But it's clear that the, all of the main characters are native, aside from Kenny Boy, who – acts native but looks i don't know if he's supposed to be i don't know <laughs> he's like he's confusing um but yeah mark Marin runs this thing and you see cheese who's just a sweet kid like kind of bonding with the other kids that are there and they kind of find out like how he's done some you know stole that chip truck from the first from the first season and you see him kind of get that respect and bond from those kids and then when he gets to live with his quote-unquote grandma that was the old lady that he met from season one that he just pretended to be her grandson just because he thought that would make her feel good and you also find out that he does that because 
it's like he wants people to just feel good. Like he doesn't want people to feel bad, right? Something that he he got from Daniel, and that is why he is the way he is, trying to just be nice and considerate of people. That's why when he introduces himself, he gives his pronouns. Like, you know, he's he's concerned about n- not wanting to offend anybody. And, you know, so he's a sweet kid. And you find out his cheese is because his first name is Chester. So, you know, Cheetos. It's brilliant. And Flaming Hot Cheetos, which aren't depicted, not a sponsor, I'm sure, that supports this show for whatever reason. But this, the chips that everybody's addicted to, whether it's the, the art salesman, whether it's Daniel's mom in prison, whether it's all the kids, whether it's Elora having ulcers from the first... First season, first season from eating the the flamers, the flamers would have been a no brainer to be flaming hot Cheetos, and would have been a perfect tie in with Cheese's name. But they don't have it. It works though. It's like off brand, which I'm sure is actually probably more authentic to reservation stuff, like the the lifestyles getting off brand stuff. But so you get to see little things of these the different kids having their different journeys, doing their different things, seeing the adults and their problems. You see the adults go to a convention where it's kind of like this event where they can kind of let loose. There's a, the hilarious scene where they all take edibles. You know, one of them, uh, I think it was Bear's mom, is like nervous. She's like, I don't do this stuff. It's like, don't worry. It's just like five milligrams. And then they find out. It's like, oh, those 25 milligrams. And when they're, which isn't, for me, 25, you definitely feel it. If you're not, I, it just depends on your, your tolerance to, didn't seem like that crazy. Either way, the scene where they like hear the song, the DJ's playing, it's like the 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 social t- kind of time of this convention. Uh and you see all the girls go out and it's like in the beginning of the episode it was them as kids dancing to the 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 uh radio. So they're like, "Yeah, let's do it. Let's go out and dance to this song." I think it was like Aaliyah or something like that. And they go out and seeing the perception of how they're dancing versus the reality hilarious absolutely hilarious uh that is the episode we also get to see bobby lee in uh, again where he's trying to hook up uh they're trying to help him hook up uh with with native women hilarious love that episode as well uh you see the two the two uh the uncle and the other old guy who made the copper sculptures from season one, you see them help Willie Jack and Cheese lift the curse where they're like, they cl- they were able to collect uh, items f- of Jackie's and they go to the river and they, they do their thing. But in them doing the ceremony, it's really just them hashing out this time where they slept with the other's girlfriend while they were broken up. Hilarious. And then they ended by by singing uh, by singing "Free Fallen" by uh, God, what's his name? Uh, "Free Fallen" by "Free Fallen." Oh, I'm not getting his name, but I'll, I'll I'll maybe it'll pop in my brain. Another hilarious scene, though, um, the scene where Willie Jack goes to prison. Right, so that's one of the last episodes at school close to graduation they're given back these letters they wrote to themselves in freshman year these like time capsule letters and willie jack is the cousin of daniel so she's given daniel's letter after class and she's like doesn't know what to do with it and it's the episode she goes to visit daniel's mom in prison which we don't know why she's in prison I don't think we find out. Um, but she is like a healer. She was like the healer of the group. Um, and we also see like in the morning at the prison that she like has one of the elders that she sees when she's channeling the elders to do her healing shows up. And she's like, what are you doing here? She's like, oh, it's a big day. We're excited to see what happens. Right. And she doesn't know yet. 
And then Willie Jack shows up and she's like, I don't know. Like everybody's broken up. I want to fix this, but I don't know how to do it. And the idea of getting everybody together with food, how she like goes and buys all of the different stuff, the flamers and the energy drinks and all the other junk food from the vending machine. She's like, bring to get food brings people together. Right. And the scene where she's doing the prayer with her, like kind of showing her how to do a prayer, kind of, but not really teaching, just praying with her and kind of passing the torch is so emotional. I get so choked up. Willie Jack, by far my favorite character. I absolutely love her. She is amazing. Like her attitude, her like everything about her is my favorite thing of the show. And to see her get emotional when she, she, like, you know, it's showing her taking deep breaths as Daniel, Daniel's mom is kind of guiding this, this prayer. And while she's taking these deep breaths, she feels their presence. She feels one of the elders put their hand on her shoulder. And she says, oh, shit, right? Like, I, holy shit, you know, this shit's real. I'm feeling it. Right. Just like. Like so emotional. Just weeping. I'm choked up. Amazing. Uh, Just another one of those. The aspects of the show where like despite the fact that these episodes are like half hour long episodes and despite the fact that there's like super dense, heavy, dramatic, sad, heartbreaking subject matter dealing with death dealing with more the mourning of people dealing with the trauma of left behind dealing with these lives that are like just trying to find some joy and they're able to like have these moments of like just heart-wrenching emotion and then just like effortlessly be funny at the same time. Like it's just the the way it's able to balance those those different emotional contrasting emotions is amazing. And this episode is a great expression of that. You know, you're getting just Willie Jack's how she reacts to things and how comedic that is in so many ways, but also seeing her like just a, bu- a beautiful performance from her also seeing her how moved she is and how she gets freaked out when she feels the presence of these elders that are all just standing behind her and kind of this thing where she's Daniel's mom is passing the torch. Her aunt is passing the torch to her. Like you are a healer like I am. And when you pray and you focus hard you can channel and connect with these people that are from our lineage, these other elders, these other healers, and they can help guide you. Right? So kind of her first lesson in what she's capable of and handled in a way that's absolutely beautiful. You know, like this, so much of this, whether it's bear talking to the hard nipped guy that died in battle because his horse stepped in a gopher hole, right? Which is hilarious, but it's like all of those humorous moments and all of these magical things are handled in a way that don't feel ridiculous as I'm sure they would have. If this show was created by a bunch of white people in LA, you know, if it wasn't a show produced by native Americans, with Native Americans, written, directed, cast, like just from bones to flesh, just Native Americans being able to understand how to combine those mythological, supernatural, magical moments along with real trauma, real humor, real laughter, and real fun characters. 
beautiful. Let's take a little break from the show to promote the benefits of Inspired Disorder Plus. So you go inspireddisorder.com slash plus. Sign up. $5 a month. You get to binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad free. You get to watch all of the live painting videos I do. You get a special members only discount and deals for all of the artwork and merch that I sell. You also get the complete podcast back catalog of every podcast I've ever produced. Hundreds of episodes countless different podcasts. You also get access to my personal blog. A new blog comes out every week. In addition to that, you get my creative writing that I'm releasing. You also get access to asking me anything. 14 years of experience podcasting. I've been creating art my entire life. I've been using Photoshop since middle school. And you can contact me to ask me questions about that or anything else. So those are the benefits for signing up for Inspired Disorder Plus. And now let's get back to the show amazing show just such an amazing show and that that episode where she goes to prison is great um and just getting to see these appearance and see how connected everybody is and to see how them dealing with the similar trauma with cookie dying and how that affected them and seeing how at the end of that episode how daniel's mom adds all of the kids names to the, her visitors list where they weren't before right because uh, she was trying to avoid, because looking at those kids reminded of her, her, of her son, and she was running away from that pain, just like, in a lot of ways, Alora trying to run away from the pain when she left and ditched everybody else. You know, they're trying to run from the pain instead of dealing with it. And Willie Jack wanting to try and hold these people together. Right. She is in so much the glue to that crew when Daniel and Alora are pretty much going their separate ways. Daniel's doing his work. Alora's going to work. And Willie Jack knows that, like, when they're together, it's not like they're polite to each other, but it's not like it used to be. Right. Things were broken when Daniel killed himself and they only got worse when Alora left and, you know, ditched everybody and then of course you have cheese there that just kind of just loves everybody right he just i the most lovable character cheese my favorite character willie jack you know then probably the the hard nipple guy you know the spirit guy uh the twins are great as well who their bikes get stolen so they're on foot for some of it right you still like it's the show, the show still utilizes all these pieces. The 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 crew that was against the Res Dogs. There's the scene where they're all brought together. The uh, the episode of um, the colon- decolonization episode, which a great episode. It's it's the episode where they kind of all come together. I think that's the one before. Yeah, way before the prison one, but it's definitely the one where. Jackie's character starts to bond like Willie Jack is still like anti he's still against her and I guess yeah the Mabel the grandma when Alora's grandma passed away that you could see the friction still there right because she she feels like in some ways uh, Willie Jack feels like in some ways that Jackie was the influence that took Alora away from their group but the reality is Alora just wanted to get away. She didn't want to be she was running away from her problems. So the decolonization episode is kind of one where I would say Willie Jack and Jackie kind of pardon the pun or offensive <laughs> reference. I don't know if it is bury the hatchet. That could easily be an offensive <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh but they do they you know they put they put their past behind them and they kind of like come to they come to uh an understanding where they come together right which kind of happened during the tornado but this like kind of solidified them where even when you know the the time capsule episode where willie jack goes and she prays with daniel's mom and then she 
decides like she's told bring everybody together she brings everybody together kind of a potluck uh the friends and of course you know <laughs> bear brings chips Alora brings potato salad uh i don't think cheese brought anything and then uh willie jack's frying up some like wild onions or whatever but they read daniel's letter together and they decide because in that letter daniel wanted to go with everybody to california for spring break so they're like, well, let's, we need to do this. This is what Daniel wanted to do. We all need to go at least visit California to say goodbye to Daniel. And when they leave, you see them all saying goodbye to the other kids, the people that were part of that rival gang. And then they go out to California, which is fun, right? And... You see Bear with this envelope full of money. And any time you see somebody show a bunch of money, you know probably not going to be there for long, right? It's like they're, they're going to get mugged. That's going to get stolen. They leave it in the car, which is, I mean, obviously this is like small town behavior, right? they they didn't they didn't grow up in a city they don't have street smarts right they have small town everybody knows everybody kind of trust in leaving a stack of money in the glove compartment so of course the car gets stolen their money gets stolen bear's dad doesn't have like his his famous rapper dad of course changes number so he doesn't have his number and they meet white Jesus, which, of course, white Jesus would be the person you run into in L.A. And he kind of helps guide them to Skid Row. Obviously, I the one thing I love this show, not one thing, one of many details I love about this show is that they they accurately depict how horrible L.A. is for walking around and how far how long it takes to get places right so like every movie every tv show about la it seems effortless that people get to like the beach the airport all these different parts of la that would take hours to to get to in reality like there was one stuber the comedy with uh with uh batista and um that comedian i forget he drives an electric car all day, all over L.A., never has to charge it up, gets to places, all kinds of different, goes to, like, Venice, to, like, Hollywood Bowl, to, like, uh, you know, goes all over, the, on one charge of, uh, it's just ridiculous. An okay movie, though. Um, so they end up getting to the beach, finally. And it's another super emotional aspect of the show. We're like, Alora is like scared. She doesn't want to say goodbye, right? But they d they finally do. They go out into the ocean. Cheese has his says a prayer as he does in his way, whether it's at Alora's grandma's kind of gathering, whether it's it's here, whether it's you know at the 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 uh, the tornado thing. Like he's a guy who can put some words together and and show some respect to the the moment and the situation so they all go into the water and then you see daniel kind of show up as they're all like huddled together standing in the ocean and it's just like another one of those scenes it's like oh just get so choked up so emotional right but you feel good it's like cathartic they get to finally say goodbye to their friend they finally got to la Alora finally got to see the ocean, you know. God, just thinking about it, I'm getting choked up. <laughs> but it's just it's just the power this show has at like being able to be hilarious, but then also just just reach in and fucking tear your goddamn heart out, you know? And uh it it's you know cathartic that they finally get to you know, after two seasons, they finally got to L.A., they finally got to the ocean, they finally got to have some closure with Daniel, they put his letter in the ocean, and 
afterwards, Bear says he doesn't want to leave. So we'll see what happens. Season three has been announced on IMDb. There is a season three. Um, next year. It's it's in IMDb already. 2023 is the release year. So who knows when? Probably around the same time this last season, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but excited to see what happens in season three. Does Bear stay? Maybe he gets to finally see his dad. That could be an episode. I would imagine they all end up back on the reservation unless Bear is just... You know, I could easily see these, not all of the characters being there next season, right? Especially if these actors start getting jobs doing other things. It happens all the time with TV shows. But I would hate to see Bear leave. I love all of these actors. I love the kids. I love that all of the characters they added to the show in season two, the, all the adults, all of the new dynamics between the, the adults. So I don't know, you know, we'll see what happens. Um, you know, we'll see maybe if, if Willie Jack develops her abilities more. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, um, it's pretty great. You know, Mark Maron was great. Dog face was great. Uh, he could easily come back, although, you know, he was arrested during the season, so who knows if he'll come back. Um, getting to see Daniel's parents, finally. Uh, all, that, all of that great. Getting to see Bear and, and Kenny Boy. Like, even, I love, Bo I love all those guys. The like, I love the meth heads. They're adorable. They're ridiculous, stupid, you know, people. But maybe they'll dip into that in Season 3. Maybe Season 3 will be them dealing with drug addiction and alcoholism right maybe that will be the thing but either way as there there should only be one way oh also the the two times the beginning of this the show where jackie went to the kind of the the robotic native american medicine man th robot thing fortune teller and she gets a message message is like oh you're you're on the wrong path kind of a thing and then Bear gets a similar one later on when they're going to L.A. Hilarious. Also, the voice of the hard-nipped guy. Um, so I love that aspect as well. And also, when Bear is looking for a job, how he goes to the catfish place that they love. And they knew that they stole the car. They had him on camera. The guy didn't lose his job. Like, all that stuff. I, I enjoyed all that stuff as well. Um, but there's no other way you can end a recap, a review of season two of Reservation Dogs without the proper send-off, as it were. The proper send-off, the way, the way these kids send off and say goodbye to Daniel, the way uh, Willie Jack, Cheese, and the two elders send off the curse she's a good girl loves her mama loves jesus and america too she's a good girl crazy loves horses and her boyfriend too now i'm free free falling new episodes of the ray taylor show come out every single day subscribe on youtube and everywhere our podcasts are found binge the full week over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus buy ray taylor show merch over at inspireddisorder.com have a wonderful day everybody peace out today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about everything that you've been wanting every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real dreams can come true what you manifest in your mind you can bring to reality